One of the themes of the great scientific discoveries of the past 100 years is that the way the world works is a lot stranger and weirder than anyone expected. This is true with scientific investigation into the very smallest parts of the universe and the largest parts and bodies of the universe. Scientists who study the smallest pieces of atoms, quantum mechanics, have identified that those little particles can behave in strange ways that we do not fully understand. Those little pieces, particles, sometimes behave like particles and sometimes they behave like light or a wave. Why? Scientists don't know. Scientists who study the planets and the formation of galaxies have identified strange things like dark matter and black holes. Around a black hole, time and even space bend by the gravitational pull of those black holes. I am no scientist, and I don't even really understand the discoveries that I've just referenced. But I do know that the scientists who do know about them recognize them to be manifestations of the strangeness, the unexpectedness of the way reality is. Strangeness, weirdness, is actually a hallmark of truth. When human beings make things up, they usually fabricate their stories according to received patterns. A mark of something true is that the pattern is overcome. The pattern is challenged. Something strange and unexpected occurs. This is a mark of truth. Today, brothers and sisters, we are invited to contemplate the strangest and most wonderful truth of all. That the one who gave rise to the sun and stars, black holes, mysteries of the universe, the one who guides the activity of the smallest particles of matter, our God, is himself a strange and wonderful mystery. That our God is perfectly one, but also three. That God is a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, one God. This truth defies all the speculations of the philosophers and poets. It is completely unexpected. And that is a mark of its truth. The only reason we know this truth is because Jesus revealed it to us. And the Spirit whom we celebrated last Sunday has given us the light of soul and intellect to embrace this truth, to believe it. The reason we know that God is Trinity is that the Eternal Father sent the Eternal Son into our world. And the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit into the world. Why? To gather us into the very life of God. An early church father, an early theologian, described the Trinity like this, that the Father sent his Son and Spirit into the world like arms to gather us into himself, into his heart. The truth is, 
God does not simply love as if love were an action, which it is. God does not love us as if love were just an attitude. God is love. That is who he is. And the whole of our Christian life is about being drawn into that eternal divine life of love. When we pray, we do not pray so much to God as in God. Jesus was born into our world. God became human. And the Holy Spirit came upon us. Why? To bring us in to the heart and house of the Father. And that simple sign of the cross which we make so many times in our prayers and our worship, reminds us of this fact. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what's in the middle? We are. Our hearts. We're drawn into the life and love of God. As a priest, I have the great privilege of being invited into many people's homes. And it's a great delight, a great privilege for me to sit around a family's table and to participate, to be in the middle of that family's exchange of love and joy and kindness. You know when you're in a loving home because that love washes over you as a guest. The Father sent the Son and Spirit into our world to invite us home, to gather us into their fellowship, to situate us in the middle of their eternal interplay of love and joy. Our baptism introduces us into that life of love. We're immersed by those waters into the love and life of God. God is one. God is three. And the only way this even begins to make sense is by the truth that God is Love. Love can never be alone. And God was never alone because God is the eternal exchange of love between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is strange. That is unexpected. It's weird. But it's wonderful. And it's true. And it's a wonderful truth of love into which we are invited to live and move and have our being. May we rejoice in the fellowship of God who has gathered us into his own heart, who has opened his home of heaven to us. And may we rejoice in the eternal fellowship of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit One God, one love, shared with us.